Hi, this is Josh Berry from the Balsams Grand Resort in Dixville Notch, New Hampshire. Happy summertime to you. We have a wonderful chicken recipe we're going to do. Chicken under a brick or an Italian polo alla matone. So let's get started. What we're going to have here is a, a small chicken, okay? Um, roughly about three to five pounds in size. We're going to break this chicken down into two parts. We're the breast and the, th and the leg on one side and the breast and the leg on the other side. We'll take the thigh bones out and then we're going to cook it in our cast iron Griswold pan. And, um, but a little bit different method than you might normally see, okay? Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the wing bones off and what we do, we pop that right out. It takes the cartilage right off in one fail swoop and then just peel that right down. Okay. So then we'll take this right off just like that. Flip the bird over. Same thing. When you have it like this and the cartilage stays on, take your knife and just slip a little bit of the cartilage away just so you can see the wing bone right there. And then you can take your thumb and do the same thing that I just did with this one and just push it right down. And that will take all the, um, the skin right off and give you a nice, um, what, what we call in the, um, the balsams in the professional kitchen, a Frenched appearance. Okay. It's very clean. It's, um, there's no cartilage or anything on it and it just adds to that professional nature. Okay. So we're going to take this side, feel where the, where the backbone is, and then we're going to come right down on one side. Okay. We'll peel that right off. Okay, we're going to come to the, um, the thigh bone right here, right on the inside, and you just want to pop that thigh bone right out. See that? We'll cut right around the bone. <clears throat> you want to keep the, the skin <clears throat> that's connecting the, the breast meat to the leg meat, though. We want to keep that because that's going to um, help out on our final dish. And then right in between the two bones right there to pop it right out. Okay, so that right there is one side. Same thing on the other side. Cut right down through the breast on the other side. Let's pop that leg bone right back out right there. You can actually hold this up and have gravity do the work for you. Okay, cut right down through. Now, there's the other side. Now, nothing goes to waste at the balsams. This carcass and these wings have such a lot of gelatinous protein that in um, most of the stocks and sauces that we make here, this is, the, this is the main ingredient. To make a good chicken stock, you take your onions and your carrots and your celery and your celery root and parsnips and mushroom stems. You'd, you'd get that with a nice roasted chicken carcass, put that in, cover it with water, throw in the chicken wings, let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour. You have some of the best chicken broth for a chicken soup or chicken stew that you could you can't even buy it that good okay no sodium in it it's just the water it's just that natural chicken flavor and that's what you want okay so we're going to put that aside now we're going to take off the thigh bones the only reason why we're going to take the thigh bones out is to help the breast meat right now doesn't have any um, bones in it at all so it's going to cook very fast we want the leg meat to cook just as quick now I personally like having the dark meat. I like the dark meat. I think it has more flavor in it. Um, a lot of people will, will eat something and will be like, oh, it tastes like chicken. Uh, well, you're associating that with the chicken breast, which doesn't have a lot of flavor in it from store-bought chicken. If you buy a nice free-range chicken or a naturally raised chicken, it'll have so much more flavor in it. So I encourage you to outsource and find local ingredients like we use at the balsams or um, find an, an organic free range hen or something like that. So much more flavorful, very true chicken. Okay. So we took that thigh bone right out. Okay. So now we're going to take it out of this one as well. Now I just broke this chicken down. I've had a little bit of practice, but I broke this chicken down in less than, you know, three minutes. So for you to do this at home, to get a chicken and to do this at home, it's so much cheaper. Okay. You get, like we talked about, the benefit of having the carcass for the stock and everything like that. And you're, you're utilizing uh, a lot more product. You get a lot more for your money. So there we go. And now we know exactly what it is. I don't know what they do to these chicken breasts before I get them. So that's why it's important that I like cooking and, and utilizing all the ingredients myself. And I know exactly where they came from. Now, I told you we we're going to cook this a little bit differently. And this is what I mean. Polo alla matone, or chicken under a brick. 
And that's exactly what this is. This is just a normal masonry brick. Um, nothing special about it. Um, we got it from, uh, I think, outside the lawn out here. I'm joking. No, we went to the hardware store and got this brick. But what we're going to do here is we're going to wrap it in aluminum foil. Okay. So we say nice and sanitary. So we have this nice heavy brick wrapped in here. Okay. And we have our nice cast iron pan, hot, ready to go. We're going to flip our chicken over, season it with some kosher salt, cracked black pepper. We're going to add a little bit of oil to our pan. And we're going to put in our chicken. Now, here's the magic part. Tell me if you're going to miss this. Ready? There we go. That's it. That's all we want to do. We want to put this brick in here. What's going to happen is the force of the brick pressing down on that chicken is going to create, make the skin so super crispy. Okay. Now in Italy, this dish would be called polo alla matone. Um, in Tuscany, they'd have these matones or, or large rocks that they'd put down over a whole deboned capon or a rooster or a hen, and they'd let it cook away. Now, in Tuscany, to cook a chicken was a very special occasion. Um, you know, you'd get eggs from chickens. You wouldn't want to just have it for dinner, and you'd get no more eggs. So chickens were normally a very uh, a, a bird of high social value. If you were going to cook a chicken, it was for a wedding or um, polo alla cacciatora, which would be, you know, chicken cacciatore, uh, the, the hunter's wife, the, the, in style of the hunt. So you'd have this on the eve of a great hunt, and um, it would be to wish you luck. So they were, they were held in such high esteem that to cook a chicken was for an event, like a special event. So we wouldn't want to deny that. So what we do is we have the chicken. It's searing right now in the cast iron pan with the heavy weight on top. We're gonna to take this, the whole kitten caboodle, the pan, the chicken, the brick, everything. We're gonna pop it into a 350 degree oven. Okay. And we're gonna let that cook for about 12 to 15 minutes. Probably closer to 10 to 12 minutes. That bird wasn't so thin and we still wanna have it a little bit juicy, okay? Now we're going to start cooking our vegetables for the dish. The vegetables we're going to serve with our, uh, with our pressed chicken um, are, like I said before, I want to use very seasonal products, very local products that we get. Uh, at the Balsams we outsource a lot of our stuff from farmers markets, local New England. We try to stay within like a 250, 300 mile radius here um, when we buy stuff for the Balsams. We have some nice wonderful local Swiss chard here and um, we use a lot of local native corn at the balsams. Um, so I'd like to incorporate both of those into our summertime dish, okay? All right, so we have a nice hot saute pan, a little bit of olive oil. What I have here is some of our house-made bacon. These are lardoons, which uh, means the bacon's been cut, it's been blanched first in water, that renders off some of the beef, and then it gets roast, um, and it just gets a, a wonderful crisp texture. So we're gonna add a little bit of our bacon lardoons in. Okay. We're going to add some of our sweet corn, just raw corn, cut off the cob. But that natural corn starch in there is going to help thicken our sauce. Okay. We want to cook this down for a little bit. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of salt and some pepper. Oh, wonderful flavor. Now I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock. This is the same stock that we can make with the carcass of the chickens that we talked about. And now I'm going to add some of our chard.
Okay. We're just going to let that braise down in a little bit of our stock. Okay. So now I'm going to take our chicken out that had the brick on it while we're letting our vegetables braise down. Mind yourself, it might be a little heavy. Okay, we can tell how flat this has been over here. Okay. Look at that, golden brown. It's been nice and pressed, okay? All these natural juices in here, this is what we're gonna have make our sauce with. Okay, now remember this Griswold pin is very hot, just came out of an oven, so we're gonna, so always use your handle when you're holding on to it, okay? We wanna keep the chicken in, we're gonna make the chicken in the same pan, so it's a, it's kind of like a one pot thing. So we got this hot here. I'm gonna take a little bit of lemon zest, fresh lemon zest, Add that right inside. And I have some fresh thyme from the, uh, the Apprentice Herb Garden. We're gonna add that right in there. Some balsam chardonnay, just a splash. And we're gonna finish off with a little ladle of our chicken stock. Okay, so we want to just incorporate all those great flavors right there. Okay. Now we're going to take this and we're just going to baste this right over our chicken. Now all the little bits that have stuck to the bottom of the, of the pan, that's called the fond. F-O-N-D, and that's what we want. We want those nice chicken, you know, bits and the, and the flavor profile from that, okay? So we're gonna take that there. Now we're gonna take our, look at this, corn and our Swiss chard. Okay. Now, because it's summertime, I don't like to serve um, a starch with this dish, with the corn and the bacon and, and the chicken. I don't think it needs one. But if you'd like, a, a wonderful piece of rice would go well with it. That's fine. Some rice or um, a little bit of pasta. Okay. I'm going to kind of put that chicken right on there, like so. And then to finish off the dish, I'm going to take a little bit of butter, okay, just mix it in. Just mix a little bit of butter in with the remaining chicken stock that was in there, okay. And what this chicken stock do, does, because of um, it being made so fresh, um, store-bought chicken stock, you won't have the same kind of sauce consistency, okay. Um, so really making your own chicken stock is really going to make, look at this, wonderful pan sauce that we have here. Okay. Look at that dish. Beautiful dish. Great summertime dish right here. Um, the polo alla matone, chicken under a brick. Beautiful sauteed summer corn. The Swiss chard, the bacon lardoons, and then finished with the lemon thyme sauce. That, that natural chicken stock flavor in there. It's a beautiful dish. Have this with a, a nice light salad for a starter. Great summertime dish right there. Uh, I'd like to say thank you. You've been watching, uh, my name's Chef Josh Berry from the Balsams Grand Resort in Dixville Notch, New Hampshire. And I can't wait to cook for you next season. So we'll see you then, enjoy the summer. Thanks.